How is it going, everyone? Malgan here. So we are going to be talking about my elementalist. And um, pretty much like going to be covering like stats, the playstyle, the passives, the gear, and uh, probably the skills as well, right? And on top of all of this, I'll also try to talk about like where I'll be heading from here. Uh, what I'm what I will try to do with the character. I wouldn't say the character is like hundred percent complete, but it's it's a very good state that I can I can come up with this build gallery guide. And if I'm going to be changing anything, I'm playing the same character, this one right now on stream every single day for about like six hours. Uh, if you would like to check it out. So if I like end up changing anything, it's always probably going to be a next video as well. It's going to be like an update on top of this. But this should probably give you somewhat, you know, a very good overall information when it comes to like leveling the character. And at the same time, grinding in the end game as well. It's quite, quite crazy actually how strong it is. And it doesn't necessarily use anything that is like, you know kind of considered broken right now or something that is going to be fixed later on that th there's no such thing I, I believe like if anything there might actually be a buff to one of the nodes that we are using so this is how the passive tree is uh, looking like and when it comes to the attributes i have given like literally everything to ferocity i don't necessarily want to talk about it that long but simply put what happens is that even though i do value a little bit wisdom agility and toughness i do believe that getting these um, the same things that these things are capable of giving me from other means is a little bit better and just putting everything into ferocity is a very simple way uh, to keep up with my like crit chance and to be honest with you crit chance is a little bit more valuable than what these are capable of giving me so that was that was basically the reasoning and also it definitely gives you such a huge uh, damage boost along the way so that um, you know while leveling as well every single ferocity point was like definitely mattering so what's like instead of you know discussing every single small point over here in the passive tree what is like the general thing that i try to do is basically they're very important some stats are incredibly important for this character so you don't want to be getting annoyed by your willpower right that's one thing so we need spell cost reduction willpower cost reduction we need um transfer time between willpower and rage reduction and we could also use cooldown reduction which is you know letting us spam our abilities or maybe in some abilities we are capable of keeping them 100% uptime so those are like the you know bread and butter when it comes to this character and you want to take these from like skills uh, you want to take these from your gear and you want to take these from like passives as well so in this point if i am not mistaken they're about like triple node when it comes to cooldown reduction we have them all and uh right there yeah and on top of that like we have you know willpower we have a lot of willpower um cost reduction some right over there if i'm not mistaken some stuff over there some stuff over here so i pretty much like grabbed all the willpower cost reduction and the travel time as well so there's a point that i would like to take over there as well soonish another point that i would like to take is this one quite a lot of beef actually like 12 percent all resistance and eight percent maximum health pretty good node but yeah, maybe, maybe soonish, let's say. Let's talk about the big nodes a little bit in the passive tree. And if you would like to see this passive tree yourself in like a browser or something, there's going to be a link down below as well. So check that out. I'll probably actually like put a couple more points into it so that like the browser one, the link is going to be giving you about like level 75 or something, because I will probably be hitting level 75 tomorrow. But we could check about like, I already made a video about branded burst. Uh, it's a ridiculous defensive, uh, you know, passive. I'm not going to jump into it too much, but what it does is that, like, five stacks of tenets, you're capable of absorbing an entire hit. And then the next hit is going to be... Uh, if you take it in two seconds, that is, the next hit is going to be mitigated by 80%. If you take another hit in two seconds, the next hit is going to be mitigated by 60%. This is an unbelievably strong defensive. I actually made a video about this and talked about like how strong it is and to be honest with you every single character out there should be having this passive um there were some comments in the section saying stuff like uh that's because they will you are low level and the high level they will destroy you no they cannot destroy you you don't understand <laughs> like it's very simply put if you fail at something instead of getting one shot you will not take any damage at all if you continue consecutively failing you will need to fail for about six seconds without stopping for this to disappear and then you will be like a normal character so it is absolutely broken in my opinion 
but it, it is, you know, it, it's a must to have for every single cake, and it's a ridiculously defensive mechanism for a caster, especially since we are not necessarily holding a shield. We have a really good resistance pool, but we are going to be talking about that later on. So we can actually tank quite a bit when it comes to like the da actual damage that's coming my way as well, even if we don't have any tennis to work with. The character is revolving around like high crit, as I talked about when it comes to the ferocity. So we go for like crit damage all around the place. Um, you know, there, there are some crit damage nodes over here as well. I didn't necessarily take literally every single crit damage node. Uh, I did favor uh, the health and the cost reduction and the stats. Something that I can suggest to you is that like if you're jumping into the game for the first time or if you're, if you're gonna level this character from the beginning, try to rush for like almost every single stat on your passive tree instead of rushing for these big nodes as soon as possible. They can they can definitely wait. Um, the stats are incredibly big at the very early on, especially everything but wisdom. The wisdom is not necessarily that big while leveling because it, it, it tends to play with your ailments, the debuffs. The debuffs are not necessarily that big at the very early game, but because um, it does require you to like, you know, omit a little bit more to them. But anything but wisdom, like toughness, ferocity, agility, extremely good at the early on. So you could definitely check those stats out and then go for like crit damage. And then afterwards you could actually go for like something like D-Stab. What D-Stab does is that just like the cost reduction that we did, uh, it has nothing to do with this explosion. But like every time you reach 30% build power and you will reach quite a bit with this character, uh, it has a chance to just give you a burst of will power regeneration, which is going to put you back to 50%. And it also stops the regen, uh, degen, uh, which is very good. It doesn't proc every time, but it does proc every so often, and it is definitely useful. And, and the build-up to it is, was incredible as well, so it was a no-brainer for me. This is another thing that is ridiculously good, and also I'll, I want you to remember this passive over here, which is, um, <clears throat> let's call these basically Accords. So we have two Accords available. What it does is that if you cast a Fire spell, you gain all damage increase. If you cast a Lightning spell, you gain critical strike increase, right? Those two are like already incredible for me. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. And if you cast, let me see, if you cast the frost, I think it has like increased ailment chance or something like that. So we don't necessarily want to cast frost all that much because we have only two maximum uh, echo room, let's say, thanks to this little modifier over here. So we want to be keeping up lightning and fire so that we have more crit chance and we have uh, more damage overall. Now remember about the Accord, about the Lightning and the Fire basically. Now there's a node over here that I would like to take at some point. Basically it gives you a uh, damage boost when there's only single enemy uh, nearby. It's good versus like, you know, beefy single targets. Another thing that I went for is the Anchor, Salvatore Anchor, and the Elevated Gain as well. So what this does is that I heavily prefer wearing heavy armor guys, heavy armor bases, all resistance. And resistance, as usual, in all ARPGs is ridiculously important for, for mitigation. Um, you know, it, it makes the character much more easy to play, definitely. And you're not necessarily getting one shot left and right, or you're like, what just killed me? In fact, I didn't die on my character yet. So still keeping up with like the hardcore achievements as well from the Steam. But um, yeah, this, this thing is basically the, the main point over here, is giving you, if you're using LVC heavy chest armor, if we want to, it's basically doubling um, resistances and the same for the helm as well, this little modifier. Uh, this thing right over here is basically giving you a spell crit chance as long as you can keep your willpower up. About the backline raider actually, um, this is not necessary. The build up wasn't so bad, I already said like the cooldown reduction is mandatory. Uh, this one's like crit chance score, this one's kind of a dead node. The next one is like 6% movement speed, it's kind of okay. And Backline Raider, if you take it early in the game, this is going to be pretty big, very early in the game, like level 10 or so. Um, thanks to thanks to these nodes right over here, you know, you have a little bit of agility right over there. And you might be able to pick up like another agility from there or something kind of early on if you can. Uh, afterwards, you will have some spell cast speed since, you know, it didn't diminish yet and you're very early into the game. And then this is going to be pretty big. But right now, at like level 70 or something, this is almost a dead node, honestly. Like, it's, it's just, you know, quite valuable and I'm keeping it. And the build-up was like kind of okay-ish as well. But it's, it's not the biggest deal. 
The last thing that we will talk about in the passives is going to be these two. About the ailments. This I, I don't necessarily know if I will be able to like explain uh, properly or like correctly, let's say. So what you're trying to do over here is that immortal offering. Um it basically says like for every stack on the enemy, maximum of five that you kill with of ailments, like debuffs that you put, um you gain five percent damage for each stack. Right, so we are capable of dealing, let's say, <clears throat> some stacks of like lightning damage, and then we kill the targets. We'll be basically having 25% increased damage by the lightning stacks, right? But we are an element to this, so we should be able to put fire as well. So therefore, we will gain, you know, that much more. Uh, perhaps we can put toxic as well, you know, and then later on, perhaps we can put weakness as well uh, from the sacred, right? Maybe we will be able to put rend as well. So all these things are capable of adding up as long as you can keep your buffs up. So you'll need to have, you know, in your arsenal, you will need to have different types of ailments. But one thing that you need to understand is that our chance of putting the ailment on the target is not necessarily the highest. And our ailment damage is extremely low. Immortal offering, what it offers to us is that when you kill the target, if you had ailments, you're basically gaining all damage increase. And that, that is basically the bread and butter of this character that we are playing over here. As, as you can pay attention, other than like crit damage, we literally don't have any damage increase over here. This is literally the only thing. Well, obviously, uh, actually, I was wrong. The Accords as well. So, let's jump into the skills from there. Remember the Accords, I talked about like fire and I talked about lightning and I don't want to be casting frost. So our main ability That's not is going to be the Reign of Fire, which is the tier of Ethelial. Um, I'm going to be sharing like th thanks to the modifiers of the Ethelial, you're capable of you know making it Reign of Fire. And the reason that we're using it fire is that again it is frost by default, you don't want to be using cold. Uh, you want to be using fire, and that's our only fire ability. But thanks to this, you're going to be running around with five fire stacks. And thanks to this, again, you're going to be running with the, you know, bonus damage to everything uh, accord easily. The next, you know, main ability that we have is this thing we can cast twice. It's called the Anomaly, and it's our lightning. If you pay attention on my buffs on the bottom left, that one is the one that is increasing my crit chance from 50 58% I'm up to 61% now uh, so those two are pretty much up all, uh, at all times and how mobile is the character is basically how much willpower can you keep so you can pretty much travel like this while pulling everything together and making rain of fire on top of them remember the more willpower the, the more aether jump that you're gonna use um, the faster your willpower is going to be depleting because I think there's some sort of like a stacking up uh, cost some type of uh, hmm, how to say some sort of like a stacking up type of mana cost uh, when it comes to like spamming aether so the last three abilities over here one thing that I'm going to tell you is that like you could definitely you know play around this you could change these three if you would like to you can make the character a little bit more direct if you would like to press buttons and then deal damage that way these are kind of passive for me <clears throat> Plague Burst is making stuff explode as I die, so that like instead of having everything inside this or everything inside this, when these are dying, those others are dying around me as well thanks to the Plague Burst. Another thing is that I can always keep up is the Bulwark. If you pay attention to the cooldowns and the uptime, I could actually like keep on pressing them. They don't necessarily cost that much either, and I'll always be having them up, so that is pretty much the point of it also. They're moving with me. They're jumping with me as well. So Plague Burst is, you know, exploding and killing stuff so that, like, the gameplay is a little not fluid. I don't necessarily need to rain a fire on literally everything. I just need to, like, rain a fire in one point. And then they will explode and everything will die. And on top of that, <coughs> Bulwark is dying. Bulwark is basically dealing quite a lot of damage around me as well. It actually has crazy damage. And thanks to the Bulwark's damage, you know, everything around me dies again and they will explode, causing another chain reaction for everything else to die as well. The last thing that I use is completely passive. Um, if you're playing a new character, this, this button over here is going to be locked. You will basically have to play a little bit in the end game to like unlock this. But 
I kind of have this little summon with me and he's capable of sharing a little bit of the damage that I take and he's also generating a little bit of uh, threat. The summon abilities in this game, they're not, they're not that good. I don't like the AI, they're usually chasing you, they're very late to the action. Even, even when they teleport with you, they're usually like very, very late to, you know, either react or to taunts or to generate threats. Or maybe just just do damage even they're usually very late but versus the very big bosses and it's possible for me to have a boss against me that is going to be tanking me quite a bit in that case it's actually good because like it's, it's sharing the hp with me and at the same time sometimes he's actually like taking over the aggro and a couple of like animations as well some some telegraphs towards him too those are very very useful stuff so that's also why i went with like this guy but if you would like, you can definitely change this. This is, in my opinion, the least, you know, important one when it comes to our arsenal. Let's talk about, like, the modifiers a little bit. So our bread and butter, the tier of Ethereal. We're running with, like, double cooldown reduction. Uh, we are running fire because of the Accords. And, and to stack the fire stacks of the offering. Uh, this is the, you know making it a rain of fire instead of just a one ice cube or a fire explosion. This one's basically increasing the area of effect. If you would like to, you could remove the area of effect and you could take increased damage nodes. Uh, that is kind of up to you, to be honest. This critical damage and increased damage over here, they're going to be obviously scaling your damage a little bit higher. Not, not too much, but a little bit higher. And um, it is not going to be too annoying, simply because, again, the anomaly, anomaly is um, capable of, you know, vacuuming stuff. So your the rain of fire most of the time is not going to be missing, even if the AoE is a little small. And I do prefer, like, the big AoE size. You can pretty much, you know, pick anything you want over here with the golem. I, I went with, like, increased HP, increased thre threats, and, and a portion of the damage received by you is transmitted to the summon. This is this is the entire point of it. There's nothing else. Increased threats and increased HP again. So about the bulwark. Um, the area of effect deals damage. This is a mandatory node. Uh, we increase the duration twice, if I'm not mistaken. Up over there and down over here. And then we have, like, the healing area follows follows the player so this is very important as well so that it synergizes with like the plague burst as well and um well i also took like the healing rates you could if if you want you could definitely drop these healing rates and pick something else that is that's kind of up to you the healing rate is not really mandatory the other points were so about the plague burst there are actually like a couple of stuff over here that are definitely not mandatory either i i, I would say increase the area of effect I would say definitely leave poisonous clouds when you kill an enemy or explosions. I'd also say like the uh, increases the explosion damage for each ailment stack since we are like applying quite a lot of stacks as well. That is pretty good. But rest of the stuff I would definitely say they are not mandatory at all. You know, check check the modifiers if there's something else that you want to mess around with. Feel free to do so. So the anomaly. We have to increase the area effects of the... Um, the inner dot, basically, this this inner little circle over here around my cursor, it's supposed to be even smaller than this. This node over here is making it a little bit bigger, so the, it's like basically two circles on the ground. One of them is like the vacuum, and the other one is like a damage over time on the, like a pool. Thanks to skill vortex pulls in enemies multiple times. Okay, so thanks thanks to this um eco of infinity, this node right over here. The magnetic pull is actually like pulsing. It's not stopping after once. So you really want this thing to, to basically, you know, synergize with that and have as big as possible. And on top of that, like, basically you can cast two of them. This is very good as well. If you pay attention to my skill bar, when I cast an anomaly, even though it goes into a cooldown, I can actually like cast it one more time. And this is very good as well. The damage that the enemy deals is not bad at all, and if you put them on top of each other, their damage actually stacks up as well. The last one is just increase the vortex duration so that like I have more anomalies on the floor. So the last spell that we'll check out is the Aether Jump. Uh, I would say most of the nodes over here that I'm going to show are going to be mandatory. You need to reduce the willpower cost. Those two nodes, up and down. The teleport range is extremely good. Reduces the cooldown. Allows the 
skill to be cast multiple times as well. This is a ridiculous one. Actually, it completely removes cooldown of the ability. But each recast has an increased willpower cost. It was very easy to put. I don't know why I couldn't say this. <laughs> and then there's uh, casting the skill removes all crowd control effects. Very crazy node. In my opinion, if you're frozen or stunned, you can just like, you know, aether jump away instead of rolling. It increases movement speed, uh, actually, after using it. So it gives you a boost of movement speed right over there. It actually stays for a while, too. The right side. It's like a debuff for some reason. I don't really know. So these are, like, pretty much every single skill. And we did talk about, like, the passives as well. Before jumping into this, um, uh, into the gear, I actually want to finalize with the passives, like, what I would like to take next. Or, at the very least, some, like, notable... Some nodes that I like, you know, maybe worth mentioning. Let's say that way. So I already mentioned this execution. It's a good node, in my opinion, for a simple click since we are already there. Another mention is going to be this one, the pain resistance. Crazy defensive node for just one click. Very good, in my opinion. Um, I could mention this 200 willpower rage. If you want to mess around with this character, I'm not. I'm personally not going to do this. You could go for safe from afar. Interesting. I just don't like the build up so much. So you would be committing quite a lot of points just to get to safe from afar. Uh, it's an interesting node. So check it out. Let me know like how it goes. Another thing that I'm going to tell you is that like um, this one, the focus. Twenty-five percent damage when at least six meter away from all enemies this, this is an interesting one as well in my opinion this is going to be working almost at all times i could mention one more i had something like if you would like to have a little bit more defensive stuff you could click this as well it's just going to be giving you a little bit of block chance six percent isn't too bad it's all right You can dodge through the enemies if you like to. So far, it didn't necessarily, you know, feel mandatory for me or like needed for me at all. Yeah, th those are going to be it, guys. I'm actually not going to be mentioning anything else. Eventually, what you could do is like you could also play around on um, status. Was it over here? Yeah, right over there. So basically what it says is that when you hit an enemy afflicted by status, they actually take 100% hit damage again after a delay. So you know how much burst we have? Um, we could we could sort of like apply status. Status is, if I'm not mistaken, Aether is debuff. Aether is ailment. And we could status an enemy. And I'll talk about like how we can do this. And then afterwards, with our entire burst is going to be hitting one more time after a short delay and th this this might actually be ridiculously strong it's just that like i didn't want to try it yet but i might try this later on and if i was going to try that how would i try it if i'm not mistaken there's an aether jump status ability enemies near the beginning and the end inflicted with status and i'm pretty sure this just you know ignores all the rules and applies the status and it's going to be you know lasting pretty long as well so when I'm showcasing the build, you will actually be able to see, you know, how, how, you know, bread and butter when it comes to, like, the Aether jump anyway. So we'll be, are going to be literally jumping inside packs as well, because the character is very tanky. And in that case, you should be able to use this very, very good. The build-up shouldn't be too bad either. If I'm not mistaken, there's, like, you know, dot chance for shield, Aether damage. It's okay -ish. Same. There's a little bit more Aether damage if you want to take those. You know, I could I could probably hear somebody like already saying why aren't you using the anomaly as aether damage? The default is aether, as I said at the very beginning. We want the accords. This is my only lightning damage right now in my build. We also want to be stacking lightning so that like the you know the offering is going to be giving me lightning as well. I think I'm I'm having this like very long the build guide. I wish it was a little bit faster than this. People always hate my long videos. I'm sorry, guys, if you're new to my channel. Um, Alright, so let's look at the gear a little bit. But, you know, it's not going to be surprising. 
as I said in the very beginning, I favor the resistance base. So I look for like the maximum resistances I can in almost every single item. But there are some affixes in these items that I must find. And defensively, right next to the resistance or like utility wise, is cooldown reduction. It's must find. Because basically you're capable of playing this character thanks to that. And then the willpower cost reduction and the travel time reduction, I think that's what it's called, right? transfer time reduction between willpower and rage that's what it is so you're trying to like find these um in every single thing that it would roll and now if i'm not mistaken it's capable of rolling on like gloves on shoulders on helm on chest on pants maybe even i'm missing something but i think those are those are pretty much it when it comes to like cooldown reduction willpower reduction and then transfer time on top of all this what you want is like crit damage obviously you would like some casting speed if you could but the most important thing as far as i can tell and the most damage that we gain is from like the flat values to add it to the spell so if you look at my staff right now it's it's not a good staff at all in my opinion it's an okay staff it's it's like an old devil staff even from level 50 right now so it's been like 20 levels that i've found this maybe even more to be honest with you but um it gives life leech from the spells which is very good it gives a little bit of crit damage and it gives like two different flat damage values to my spells and those are like the most important one a dream staff how it would be is that like i think it's offensive to the sockets that you need you can definitely like manipulate the sockets over here in the xenophon remember that taste. you can put this over here to my i'll open it and you would be searching for offensive twos triple of them um on top of it all you would need triple spell damage increase so perhaps like say good fire and lightning numbers into the spells and you would need life leech for the spells i would say it's mandatory you'd probably need like crit damage as well and perhaps spell damage roll too that that would be like the ultimate best staff that we can go for right now and then on top of this you can you can put a lot of things you can put like crit chance you can put like spell casting speed you could you could even put something else probably um there are some like specific damage increments if i'm not mistaken like you know increasing occult damage or like increasing elemental damage that would be possible as well so i don't necessarily need to like show you all my gear after talking about this since i already like covered what i um value i try to get like some toughness or some ferocity from my gear if i could but for the most part like as i said i just focus on like uh cooldown reduction and i just focus on like um post reduction and resistance those are like the biggest ones flat damage on the rings and the amulets i would say so this is going to be the entire build guide let's go kill something some lagging hopefully i'm not lagging guys let me guess you want a contract let's go for like a champion just a single level okay champion level 73 what do you want sir If I don't cast anything at all, I would still be able to kill everything simply because of my auras around me. So actually like the small stuff are taking quite a lot of damage. You could eventually maybe even making it make a build just around, you know, passive damage around you, but this build is not necessarily that. This build is actually capable of having a ridiculous burst as you can see. I'm capable of stacking everything on top of each other. I pretty much have like infinite willpower. And I will be able to, um... No. Yeah, I'll be able to pretty much, like, nuke them down. And crazy mobile as well. And to be honest with you, it is very fun to play if you if you enjoy playing something like this. Just look at that. It's ridiculous. It was a chest. That's sad. <laughs> Right, we have an elite over here. Let's see how fast. Not right now. You don't even need to move because like my resistances are so high, it is absolutely insane. About like 4.3k physical 
resistance, about like 4.5k fire resistance. Obviously, this is like everything adding up. You can necessarily get to this like incredibly easily. You need to have like that passive, the anchor that we talked about in the passive tree. You need to have like a very, very good high roll resistance all around the place with like every single piece, I would say, actually. That can't be done. You don't necessarily need to like snap cast the plague burst and the dawn every single time. You can even like kill stuff without casting these. But trust me, like at the very least, having the plague burst definitely makes uh, the game a little bit smoother. Simply because, as I explained before, you don't necessarily need to be placing your fire uh, you know, on top of literally everything, or you, you don't necessarily need to cover like every single enemy because plague burst is going to be taken care of easily. Let's pick up like the rings and the belts. Those are usually very rare. Uh, a lot of people when it comes to like caster playstyle of having an issue and like you know this there's this general question of like don't, you don't have a rage dumper how do you play a caster the, first of all you don't necessarily want a range dumper because like we don't um you know most of the range dumpers are scaling on weapon that would be like pressing a button that is complete waste because it's not scaling so it doesn't deal any damage whatsoever so i would be having a downtime and this is also the reason why we are building up the cost reduction as much as we can that is you know when it comes to the casters in wilson i do believe that like it's going to be a mandatory stat for every single one of them Yeah, obviously, like, thanks to the ridiculous, you know, willpower potion, it has so many stacks, actually. You're capable of basically having some sort of, like, a rotation of, you know, I'll blink three times, I'll put a fire, a rain of fire, I should say, and then afterwards, I'll probably just drink once. You know what I mean? It just, it just becomes pretty much muscle memory. At that point. So thanks to that, you don't necessarily need to uh, worry about, like, the uh, willpower issues either. The only time that you can have problems with this game, killing something, is at the at the end boss, basically. So if you read this, it says, um, it says tough. Basically, I think he has more HP, that's what it is. It's just like material shield. So it could be elemental shield as well. In that case, elemental shield is actually pretty fucking tanky against us, guys. Um, the worst thing that we can get is hands down tough, uh, elemental shield, and on top of all of this, it can be unstoppable as, unstoppable as well. So the, the monster is not going to be breaking at all in that case. That is pretty much terrible, guys. <laughs> so that combination, and if you're like pushing, if you're like progressing, My lady, let's say like, you know, 15 levels, 20 up, levels are higher up, than you. you take a look. I didn't really push further because as I said, I want some experience right now. But I should be able to push quite a bit actually with this character. There's quite the, um, quite the damage. But as I said, like if, if you're you know ahead of your level a little bit, and if you find a monster like this one, uh, it's gonna take you a while to kill. About like you know maybe 40 seconds or something, maybe 30 seconds. Kind of depends on the monster type as well. Some some of them are a lot more annoying than the others. Uh, but this is this is pretty much like uh, how you play it. Let me know what you think about the build. I've been getting a lot of good comments on the stream. And I really hope, even though I know this was pretty long, it's, it's saying 33 minutes so far. Even though this build guide was pretty long, I, I do hope that like it was useful for the ones that are watching. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out, YouTube.